Are you tired of... Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. This is the fifth vlog here, and today, this is for you first time home buyers out there. You are thinking of moving out of your parents' house. You're thinking of, you, you, know, you wanna stop renting and paying the landlord's mortgage. You said, I wanna, I wanna own my own property and start building my real estate portfolio and not helping other people do that, right? You're smart, I get you, and that's why you're here. First time home buyers, this one is for you, and this is a special one. We're gonna go in detail, and I'm gonna tell you a few things that you need to know, and things you wouldn't hear elsewhere, and some pointers that things you need you can do before purchasing a home, and things you can do during the process as well. And questions and things that you need to know throughout the process, and that you should be asking whoever you're working with, right? So let's get right into it. The first point is the most important point, is find an experienced realtor in your area. Yes, find an experienced one. You can work with somebody new. I understand that. I understand giving an opportunity. I'm young and people like to give me opportunity too, but find somebody who knows what they're doing or works with somebody that knows what they're doing. You want someone experienced by your side. You want somebody by your side that can hold your hand from A to Z because there can be bumps along the road. Yes, there are times where a transaction of buying a home can go flawlessly. That's great, that's fine and handy. But you want someone in your corner for just in the event something happens that you don't know how to deal with. Or somebody who has the connections that you need to help you throughout the entire process, which we will get into now in these next steps. So that's number one is finding the realtor, right? And now you're probably wondering, it's also part of one, right? Is how do I find the realtor? So I'll give you three little ways of finding a good realtor. The first would be visit open houses in your local market. So, you know, look at, identify kind of properties that you're looking for and just start visiting open houses. Go to those open houses because those are usually where the professionals are. The people who are vets in the business are out there putting in the work, right? And they have the listings. So go to open houses, meet people. Maybe you hit it off with another agent out there and that's the one you want to work with. Great, right? And also the great agents, the good ones, will follow up with you to see how you like the property or see if there's any way that they can help you throughout the process, right? That's one way to find it. Or you can simply, if you know an agent, right? If you do know a realtor by any chance that might be living out of state or somewhere outside of your area, call them. Say, hey, like, you know me. Like, you're, you're actually, this is a great example. You know me. We know each other, right? Well, I don't know you, but you know me. You're here on the, on the camera, right? You can call me and say, let's say you're buying a house in California, but you don't know an agent out there and you want a good agent. You can call me and say, hey, Jonathan, I need an agent in California to take care of me, to help me find something. Do you know anyone? And chances are I will know someone. And if I don't, I will go out of my way to find somebody that's really good, that will cater to your needs as needed, right? Use people that you know, right? You know me, you know another agent, call them up and ask them to help you connect the dots, right? All right, that's a great way to do this as well. And of course, you could just go the easy way too, is look online and type in Google top agents in Miami and just try, try to find someone who has a proven track record of selling homes like the one you are looking for. All right, so once you've found your realtor, right, we're gonna go to step two. Get pre-approved for financing by a lender. You can ask your realtor for any recommendations that they may have, or if you know somebody, that could work too. Or you could just go to your bank. But this is super necessary because you wanna know what you are able to afford and what the bank would be willing to lend you before you go out and start looking at properties. Now, after you've gotten pre-approved, then the next step, in my opinion, is to go ahead and have a title company ready to go, right? If you know a title company or an attorney that can handle your closing, just have them on standby. Hey, look, I'm, I just got pre-approved. I'm gonna start the process. As soon as I purchase something or get something under contract, I will let you know. Have that person on standby. And if you don't know an attorney or a title company, then you can ask your realtor for any recommendations same as you know, your mortgage broker, right? These are people that they've worked with in the past that are professionals. Again, they want to look good. The realtors want to recommend people who are good to you. After you have your team ready to go, because teamwork makes the dream work, 
The team is ready. Now you're ready to go out and start looking at houses. This is the fun part. You're gonna go out, you're gonna you know, look online, your realtor should be sending you things, should be sending you houses available. You can be looking on your, yourself as well and Zillow or whatever and then just send the realtor what you find and then the realtor will schedule the appointments for you for you to go out and see the houses, right? And when you're at the houses, there are certain questions that you always need to keep in mind that your realtor will probably ask for you, but if not, then you should keep these questions in mind, right? So like here in Miami, you need to ask, hey, how old is the roof, right? How, if it's, if it's older, have you had any leaks? Or are the pipes cast iron or are they PVC? If they're cast iron, that's not a good thing. Uh, if they're PVC, that's a good thing. Um, is there a septic tank? Uh, when was the last time it was drained out? Are there impact windows and doors? If not, do they have shutters? These are questions you need to keep in mind and ask or have your realtor ask when you're looking at homes, because these are important things for you to know. Now keep in mind that every market is different, right? Sometimes in areas you're dealing with snow, maybe there's a certain way of construction, maybe there are certain elements of a home that aren't in Miami. So your local realtor should know the different hurdles or different possible problems that could be in a house that you need to be aware of, right? So that's part of the reason why you need someone experienced who's dealt with homes similar to what you are looking at. The fifth point is once you've identified the property, right? The one that you love, your dream home, then what I would say is ask your realtor to run comparables on the property. You want to understand what the fair market value is of the home. So if you ask your realtor to do that, which typically they'll do that anyways, they'll run comps and they'll look at similar homes that are sold nearby comparable to your home, right? Now, if your home is asking a million dollars and the home next door, which is exactly the same, same size, same finishes, same pool, everything, just sold for 975, then that's an accurate indicator that the value of the home will likely be or should be $975,000. And that's a number that an appraiser, when an appraisal is done by your bank, that's gonna come up as a comp that could potentially hurt the value of your home on that appraisal. So ask your realtor to run the comps for you and then you can make a decision based uh, on what the realtor tells you on the offer price, where are you go in at the offer price, right? Start negotiations. Another thing that the realtor should find out is the motivation of the seller. Do they need more time? Do they need a longer closing? Do they need a shorter closing? Do they need a post-closing occupancy? Find out their motivation and certain things that may come to your advantage when negotiating, right? Because if they need a month after closing to stay in the house so they can find another house, maybe you give that to them and you try to finagle the price a little lower, right? Just, you know, use it as leverage. It's always good to know these things. Once you've identified the actual offer that you want to present, have the realtor go over the contingencies of the contract with you. And the important ones, here, the three off the top of my head, the financing contingency, the inspection contingency, and title evidence contingency, right? So have your realtor go over those things with you so you have a better understanding and have knowledge on those things going into the contract. And also, lastly, part of that offer, ask your realtor to inquire upon a seller's disclosure. Here in Florida or Miami, there's a sell, usually sellers fill out a seller's property disclosure answering basic questions. The sellers do not have to do that, but most of the times they do. It makes everything nice and easy. They disclose if they've had any leaks, they disclose if they've had any problems. So legally they're supposed to disclose any problems, they should. Right? Uh, so that disclosure puts it in writing and shows it to you in your face. So ask for a seller's property disclosure. Now, once you have an executed contract, then you are going to do the inspections. That's really important. Now, your realtor should have an inspection company that they've worked with in the past. You can ask them for recommendations or you can try to just look up online or if you know a company, you can just hire them to go out there and conduct their inspections, right? It's important to find out certain elements of the house that you need to inspect. For example, septic tank, that's a separate inspection. Should you do a mold inspection? Sewer scope inspection because the pipes are older and you wanna make sure that they're not leaking and there's not any issues. These are all questions you should ask your realtor or in the inspection company that goes out and that you know everything that you are getting into when you purchase this house. Now, please note the inspections. One of the important reports for you to have, or two of them actually, is the four point and the wind mitigation reports. If you're purchasing a home, 
these two reports are important for you to get your insurance. You're gonna need these two reports to provide to your insurance company so they can give you a quote on insurance, which we'll get into later, but make sure you order those two if you're buying a house, okay? Now you have the inspections order and everything like that, and while you're doing this as well, you need to start getting your financing in order, the, uh, the application for financing, right? Now here in Florida, in Miami, typically you have five days from the day of contract execution to make application for financing. Once you've identified your lender, then at that point, I would say make application and get everything over to them ASAP, as soon as possible. You do not want any delays whatsoever, especially not because of you, right? You have dates and deadlines to meet, so get them done as soon as possible. Don't wait. And also, request that the appraisal be ordered ASAP. You do not want to waste time on that. Now, that, do that once you already know you're moving forward because it does cost at least $500, maybe even more to get an appraisal, but you need to have that done sooner rather than later because you don't want this to drag on and waste more time because the appraisal is a huge part of the contract. The appraisal is basically getting the value of the home and if the appraisal would come in lower than the purchase price, then you might have an issue. But at that point, at least here in Florida, if the appraisal comes in lower than the purchase price, the buyer could cancel the deal or the buyer could come up with the cash at closing or the seller could reduce the price. But you'd have to kind of take it by ear and that's why it's important you do the appraisal ASAP so you don't waste any time. The next point would be just have your realtor check in on the title company to make sure that everything is going smoothly with title and that there are no issues or clouds on title either. Then your next point would be shop around for insurance. You already have your wind and your four point mitigation. Send it over to various insurance companies. Ask your realtor for recommendations if they have any. Maybe you have an insurance guy as well and just get different quotes for your insurance. Now, once everything is passed and you are basically, your property's free and clear, you approve for the loan and everything like that, you're good to go. You, got, you get the clear to close from your lender, then you need to conduct the walkthrough. The walkthrough before closing. Usually it's the day before closing or on the morning of the closing before you go and sign. It's because you wanna make sure that before you sign the documents and you sign the dotted line, that there, everything that was promised would be in the property is still there. You wanna make sure it's still in the same condition as well before you write the check and sign the dotted line, right? I think that's reasonable. So make sure you conduct the final walkthrough inspection. Now the next step is that you sign the documents. Make sure you do some wrist exercises because it's a lot of signing, especially if you're getting financing. It's a lot of documents you have to sign. So it's time for you to sign those docs. I would recommend that you get the cash to close number from the title company a few days prior and send them the money before closing so that way there's no delays on getting the money over to them. Now, please, 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 disclaimer here, beware of fraud. There's a lot of fraud that's going on with wiring, okay? You need to be sure you send the money, if you're sending money through a wire, to the right person. Call the title company before you send the, the money, right? Go to the bank if you have to or whatever, and say, hey, read me your wiring instructions. Have them read it to you twice if they have to. Make sure that you are sending it to the right person. I've had people tell me horror stories before where they, the title company's email was hacked and then they got like an email from someone to send to a certain place. Just be extra, extra careful where you send the money. I always like to be certain of this, you know, take as many precautions as need be. Now, just a disclaimer here, also another thing for you to know about is that the keys are usually delivered once the file has funded. So once the money has been sent to the seller and to everybody else, that's usually when the keys are delivered to you. Now, once you get those keys, you are officially a homeowner. Congratulations, congratulations! But there's still one more thing. There's one more thing for you to be aware of. Throughout this process, this is probably the most important thing. The last point is that you are going to have a party, a house warming party, and you have to invite me. That's the last point. You have the party, you invite me, you call me up, hey, I just bought a house, I'm there. That's the last point, that's it. First time home buyers, this one was for you. Please, if you have any questions whatsoever, make sure to shoot me an email, youtube at jonathanmvega.com. And if you are a first time home buyer in need of that realtor to guide you from A to Z, that can be me. I'd love to help you throughout the process. Our team here, we have experts to help you 
accomplish your dream home goals. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Make sure you go down and comment what you'd like to see next. I'd love to work and help you guys accomplish your goals.